children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, for showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. So if you look at verse 4, you shall not make yourself carved image. But it is stop there. It says in verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. Amen. To one thing, making yourself the carved images. The second thing, bowing down and worshiping them. Now, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, because we have different images. People do make images of, you know, in our houses, we might have different you know, pictures or different decoration, maybe carved, you know, it could be animals that are carved, it could be different products. And uh, the images themselves is not you know, where the problem is. But where the problem is, just as Shola said, is the heart condition, our you know, the loyalty that we give to those images. In verse 5 of the place we, we read, God himself was saying, you shall not bow down, you shall not make these things your God. You know, so images itself might not be the problem, but making those images your God becomes where the problem is. Making them your God, giving them your worship, giving them your attention is where the problem is. And he said that our God is a jealous God. He will not share his glory with any other. So when we now begin to make those images our God, when we begin to make those carved items our God, or uh, as we have also said before, some people in our time they say, well, I don't have any image I'm bowing down to in my house. And that is where we are bringing the, you know, the understanding that it, Number one, the physical images is part of it. And secondly, any other thing that you allow to take God's attention in your life, to take the place of God's worship in your heart, becomes some of those things that God frowns at. Because God will not share his glory with anybody. So the idol itself is not a problem, but our heart. God is much more interested in our heart. Are we giving our heart to graven images? Are we giving our heart to different other objects or, or, or things and giving them our love instead of loving God with the whole of our heart? It is not wrong to love football. It's not wrong to love, you know, uh, even money. But then when we allow this love to take the place of God in our heart, as Roger rightly said, some of us need had to deny ourselves maybe the football <laughs> premiership competition that's going on to be in those places, but not everybody can do it. Everybody you know, might, might just have to say, well, I, this one comes first in my life. So when we allow some certain things to take the place of God in our heart, it becomes I told us now this is what I wrote here. I just give false sense or false reflection or protection of God. You know, talking about those graven images. God said, Don't make yourself graven images of something that looks you know, of the likeness, whether in heaven or on earth. Below. Don't make yourself those graven images. Now, if you look at the reality of it, as Buddha was saying. Those images are made to look like God. And people begin to say, oh, this is my God. And in, in, in Nigeria, then we have the God of uh, thunder, the God of uh, this, the God of that. And people make images that look in a way like those things, and they begin to worship those things. So those idols are false. They present themselves as, you know, they are false representation of who God really is. And if you look at our time today, there are some things that give itself, that you know, present itself to give us the, 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 the blessing that God gives, but they are false. Those things are not real. And if you look at what uh, Andrew was trying to say on Sunday, these things are fake, but they give us a false image 
of God, false image of security, false image of love, false image of peace, false image of the, you can measure those things, but they are false. Managai, could I say something? Yes, please. Righteousness of God is being revealed by faith, to faith. Praise God. So meaning that sometime to really know what is the idol in one's life is for God to reveal and make known. Because what can be an idol in someone's life, it may be a different something in someone else's life. Um, since week, I was fasting. And while I was fasting and praying, I have a vision, a revelation. And when everything was over, God said, and that is the idolatry. Amen. And what he was saying, it was the phone. The phone. Amen. So sometimes people want the latest, the newest of things. And not knowing that sometimes when they are going after certain things, it's idolatry. And they don't know. You know, God is saying that this is idolatry, you know, and maybe what he was basically saying that we maybe spend so much time on the phone that we don't have enough time for him. So that what's revealed unto me since week while I was fasting and praying, you know, he clearly stated that this is idolatry and what it was, it was the phone. You know? Yeah, so maybe you were saying that Brother Daniel, you are spending too much time on the phone because I do spend a lot of time on the phone. So what I'm trying to say that what might be idolatry, you know, he identify to me and said, this is the problem where I am concerned. Amen? Somebody else, it may be football. Somebody else, it may be something else. But unless God make it known, sometimes you won't know. Sometimes you will be doing something that looks so innocent. But in the sight of God, this is idolatry. Amen? So that's what Amen. I have to say. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's quite helpful. That's quite helpful. Thank you, Daniel, for that. That's helpful. One thing clear is that we are... <laughs> When it comes to idol, one person's idol may be different from another person. But uh, those things that uh, we give our worship to, our attention to, our hearts. Yes, that is. Uh, mm. the, the, the issues that sometimes want to take the place of God, mm. want to be our God, want to control us. Instead of God controlling us, instead mm. of God's spirit controlling us, those things begin to control us. They begin to take the place of God in our hearts, and it becomes a challenge. Now let's look at why does God? Why is it that God doesn't want us to indulge in the worship of idols? Is it because, as we are told, He says He's a jealous God? But, but do you think that jealousy is just because God is a jealous God? Therefore, He doesn't want us to give our attention to other things. Or how do you quantify that statement? Because I believe God. It's not just because God is a, is a joy killer. He doesn't want you to have joy or pleasure or things. But there is a reason why I feel that God doesn't want us to go after idols and after other gods. So what do you think is the reason for that? Worship belongs to God. I mean, it's very ironical that when Moses was up the mountain getting these Ten Commandments and God was speaking to him, the people were at the bottom where the mountain were making their golden calf and they all started worshipping this golden calf and saying that it was this calf that took them out of Egypt. <clears throat> when of course it wasn't, it was God. 
and they melted down all their gold ring, their gold earrings and things. So in the first place, God was quite happy for them to have that gold because basically they took it off the Egyptians and left with it. And it's kind of a bit of a payment for all the slavery, I guess. So God was quite happy for them to have the gold, but when they melted it into a golden calf and started worshipping the calf, that is when um, it was wrong. And it was a direct violation of the commandment that Moses was up the mountain getting. And I think the thing is, is that everything rightly belongs to God. You know, the Bible Ooh. tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So actually, if we have these things, we don't actually own them. They're just on loan to us from God. Even though we might have a legal right to it, it's still on loan from God. He can have it back any time he likes. Um, so everything, it belongs to God. So worship belongs to God. So if we start worshipping an idol, we're not worshipping the God who created it. We're worshipping something that he created and we might have formed into something else. Because uh, human beings don't actually create anything. We just form things from what's already here. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to remember that God created everything. God is God. He is worthy of all worship, of all praise. And uh, we should not be giving it to anyone else. And he clearly says in Isaiah that he will not give his glory to another. Um, mm. Because everything that, that's mm. made, he actually made it. Even, even the devil he created. So, you know, no one should take any worship or praise away from God because it's all rightfully his and therefore he's right to be jealous over it because it's rightfully his. And it doesn't help us at all when we worship something that's false because an idol cannot help you. An idol is absolutely nothing. And as we saw on Sunday from what uh, Andrew said about Dagon, God can smash it up any time he likes. And uh, anything that we have, God can smash up any time he likes. And there was very serious consequences for the children of Israel making that golden calf and worshipping it while That's Moses true. was up the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, of which the second one was, thou shalt not make any graven image or bow down and worship him. That's exactly what they did while Moses was up the mountain getting these Ten Commandments. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Roger. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I want to say this, that uh, one terrible thing about idols is that it makes you to, it takes from you and it keeps taking, it keeps taking, but it doesn't really give you that sense of satisfaction that you desire. And uh, uh, it, it just keeps taking from you and uh, it makes you to crave for it more, but it doesn't satisfy doesn't really satisfy, it doesn't really bring fulfillment. Now let's take, for example, some of these th the things that we go after. You know, like uh, Roger Rappi said, they need different God, and they have to make themselves a graven image. But that image, you know, you know it is a false belief that, that the image will really save them. But at the end of the day, it brings it leads to destruction. Today, people might not make that type of physical image, but people might run, run, run after money because money is a defense. But before you realize it, money does not satisfy. It keeps you wanting for more and more and more, and eventually it leads to real. And so, some people might begin to feel, well, I, I just want something else that can give me pleasure, you know? Uh, and they begin to go after, you know, looking for pleasure in, in other human beings, maybe it could be in, in some ungodly relationship, thinking that that is where the pleasure lies. And you realize that it doesn't, you know, it, it, it doesn't satisfy, you know, that long it continues until it leads to destruction, you know. So one of the things I really understand, when God said that we should keep away from idol, it's not because we are doing God a favor, I think. God wants us to stay away from things that are capable of ruining and destroying us. If you look at idols that people may want to worship today, whether physical idols, whether you know graven images, whether you know representation of things that looks like idols, those things don't satisfy, but rather they destroy. When I got it. People, when people chase after these things, it eventually leads to ruin and destruction of lives 
And I believe that's why God says, stay away from it. I am the true God who will give you what you really desire. Amen. Could I say something? Yeah. You see, there is a subtle, subtleness about idolatry. We have to understand what is idolatry. Idolatry is anything that you have put above or exalt above God. That is what is being defined as idolatry. Anything that you give too much of your attention to can become an idol. It can even be your own children. It can be your work. It can be anything. And it's not that you're going to physically bow down and worship it. But in God's eyes, it's like you're worshiping it because you are giving it so much attention, more than how you're supposed to give your attention to the things of God. So I believe as we broaden the spectrum in regarding to what is idolatry, because most people think, say, boy, you will just bow down and worship something, but it is not really that. You know, that is the, the one that everybody can see. But the one is the one that you, you not even know that you you, you 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 are doing something that God don't like because you spend too much time with whatever you're doing, amen. Or if not, you you are going after something like the latest come out. You want the latest. You want the latest. You know, and in a God eye, that is idolatry. At least when revealed to me, you know, that way him revealed to me because poor me wouldn't know that just spending so much time on the phone could be like idolatry. But when him revealed it to me say, and said, this is idolatry, you know, because sometimes I spend a lot of time on the phone because I do a lot of things on the phone. Amen. So him made me know, said, this is idolatry. Amen. And sometimes, unless you seek the face of God to find out what is the problem, sometimes you won't know. But when the Bible said, when Daniel set him out to seek the face of the Lord, God already answer the prayer. God already revealed. But it take maybe take a little time. <laughs> Praise God. Bless His holy name. So, man of God, I'm just closing with this. Idolatry is a subtle thing, you know, it's, it's a subtle thing, it's not like we're going down and bowing before something and worship, that is the one that everybody can identify, but when God reveals and says this is idolatry, you know, anything you like you take, it, it take, take up too much of your time, you know, and then it becomes idolatry because being children of God, we supposed to give God first place in our life. God supposed to have the priority. Amen. So, praise God. God. Bless you, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Does anybody have other things to bring in about this or questions you may want to ask? So like I said, before we go into prayers, uh, in addition to what Daniel just said now, which is very important, I do one terrible thing about I do. I think I said it before, but I just want to emphasize it. One terrible thing about idols is that it gives false impression of God. It gives false impression of God, whether physical, whether uh representation of those things mm -hmm. but idols give false impression of mm -hmm. god if you look at what god can do in the life in your life and in my life what idols do is to give you a false impression that you can receive those things from the idols uh some people need security and what, are I, what does idols do? Idols want to give you a false sense and of security. security. But security comes from God. 
I had to also tell you that well, you don't, you know, just talk to me and I, 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 I'm able to secure you. So when people give attention to the you know, phone, like Daniel said, or some other things apart from God, some people think that by having their phone, that is where all their security lies, and they, they give attention to to read. It is not wrong in itself. But when it takes the place of God, the, you know, the, the worship that you should do to your God, yeah, it becomes an idol because it gives you a false impression mm. that that is where your security is. And where do you think that some people make man their own idol? Because they believe that, oh, you know, this is, uh, I just need someone who can love me so much. And they believe that that love they desire, you know, is, is that man that can give them that love. And they almost want to idolize man believing that, you know, uh, uh, that is where they can find love. The true love can only be found in God. Amen. But what does an idol do? Idol gives you a fake idea, a fake you know, impression of Amen. God, making you to feel that you can receive what you desire in the, you know, from that particular person. Mm -hmm. It could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be, you know, when people will not get addicted to that particular person or that particular habit because they feel that what they cannot get in God, they can get it in that other particular thing or the image of a server. And that is exactly what God was frowning at you know, when he gave the Israelites the commandment that they should not bow to the graven image. But God believed that they will, want, they, you know, they, they will think that that is where their security lies, that is where they will find love, that's where they will find protection and other things. And God said, no, that is fake, that is false. I am the true God, I am Amen. the one that can provide those things for you. And because we are about to pray, there could be some things today that we are just struggling with. You know, like Daniel Radley said, God spoke to him about some things that he should deal with. And God talked talk about the phone itself. So you and I, there could be some things in our lives that God may be telling us tonight. I don't want you to love these things more than you love me. I think that is the essence of the study tonight. I don't want you to love these other things more than you love me. I don't want these things to take your, you know, my place yeah. in your heart. Yeah. I want to be the number one in your heart. That is actually what we are talking about tonight. <laughs> we want to give God the number one place in our heart. And we don't want to be under the control of any other thing that is not godly. We don't want to be under the influence of any other thing that can Amen. take us away from God. Amen. But to give God the number one place in our heart. And I do sometimes may not be, like we said, may not be sinful on his own, may not be a sin on his own, but being addicted to those things and allowing those things to control us and to take us away from God. That's when it becomes a sin. And we just pray tonight that God will help us. So, Amen. yeah, if there's, I don't know if anybody will have anything to say about that, then we're we'll going to pray, yes. We just have about five minutes, so we can use this five minutes and just pray. I want as many that want to pray for us to just, just lift up your voice and pray for us tonight and uh, ask God to just come into our heart and give us grace and strength mm -hmm. to deal with any situation, any power, any whatever it is that might want to compete with the place of God in our heart. Amen. That may want to put us under control instead of mm -hmm. God controlling our our lives. Mm -hmm. I just pray tonight that God will give us grace to overcome, Hallelujah. to overcome those things, and that our heart will be totally controlled by Amen. God himself and Amen. directed by God and our love Amen. for God will not be shared Amen. with any other, any other thing. Amen. So we just ask forgiveness because we know that we have a tendency to find idols and to worship other things Amen. and to be misguided and um, selfish and disobedient we ask forgiveness lord we thank you that um jesus has given us 
forgiveness, he has um, blotted out our mm. sin. Mm. But we want, Lord, to become um, more um, faithful, more obedient, more careful, mm. more aware. And we pray that um, we would just sense your guidance as um, Daniel sensed your guidance about what you're saying about the telephone we pray that all of us would really sense those things if there are things that are um a, a risk for us or we may already be giving them too much time and too much of our love and that you would give us the grace by the power of your holy spirit to turn away from these things so please help us lord Thank you that you're a God of love and that, as we've said before, it's for our own good that you want us to be pure and um, not to have idols. And so I pray that you would help us in this and um, help us to make progress and to become more like the way you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. Can we have one more person pray for us on this, please? Lord, we thank you for the way that you have brought us through this pandemic, Lord, and that has still a good number of people coming to church on Sunday. And Lord, we do pray that as we continue to move forward, Lord, that as a church we will be brought back to uh, gather again, Lord, and on Wednesday nights, Lord, when we have physical meetings, Lord, we pray that people will make the effort to come, Lord, and that the church will be full of people wanting to meet together both on Sundays and Wednesdays, Lord, mm -hmm. and that people will want to have fellowship together and worship mm -hmm. you as well, Lord, and that we would all put you first in our lives. And Lord, we would pray for those that perhaps aren't so well tonight, Lord. Mm -hmm. We um, think of Nicola and Beverly, Lord, as we haven't seen them for a long time. Lord, we pray that they would uh, get better, Lord, whatever illness this is that they have got, Lord. We pray that they would recover from it, Lord, and that soon they would be uh, back with us in the meetings, Lord, and um, joining in. We do pray for Madeline as she's very tired out at this time, Lord, with the stress of her job, Lord. We do pray, Lord, that there be a solution to the problems of her work, Lord, that they might take on more staff or help might be found from somewhere, Lord, and that you would just help Madeline just to kind of rest and recover, Lord, mm. and uh, be back to full health and strength very soon, Lord. Yes, so yeah, we do pray for us as a church, Lord, that you would just encourage us, Lord, as we move forward, Lord, that you would lead us and guide us, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we pray that for the members and those that come, Lord, that each one of us would want to put you first in our lives at all times. We know that we should have no other gods before you, Lord. Yes, um, so, Lord, we pray that it would be this way, Lord, that mm -hmm. we would always worship you and nothing would come in and take your place in mm -hmm. our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, for, Amen, Amen. for that prayers and everyone for your contributions Amen. tonight. It's been awesome and very helpful. I pray that God will continue to give us the grace Amen. in the name of Jesus.